The final race of the 2024 NASCAR Cup Series regular season comes to South Carolina at one of the most unique and arguably toughest track in all of NASCAR. Usually the aura that is this 1.3 mile egg shaped oval exudes would alone strike fear into the drivers and test their skills to the absolute limit. But this year, there is another factor to keep an eye on. Two intense battles on the points that could make or break a driver's season and possibly career. One to extend the momentum as the one on top towards the championship, the other hoping to save their season and make it to the playoffs. Welcome to Darlington Raceway in Darlington, South Carolina for the 74th running of the Cookout Southern 500. The weather tonight here in Darlington Raceway will be interesting transitioning from sunset to nighttime temperature in the low 70s with a slight wind at 6 miles an hour heading southwest through the racetrack with a 40% chance of rain and a slight chance of thunderstorms throughout the night. Welcome everyone back to an episode of MDK Race and my name is Jet. Hope you're having a wonderful day and welcome to the final race of 2024 for the NASCAR Cup Series regular season as we preview tonight's Southern 500. Now, as I mentioned earlier on, we have two points battles that we're going to be looking at here tonight. Let's first start off the one fighting for the title in terms of the regular season championship. At the moment, three drivers are still mathematically eligible to win. Let's take a look at the drivers right now. Points leader Tyler Reddick, his win at Michigan a couple weeks ago has solidified him as the one to be. He has a 17 point gap ahead of Kyle Larson and an 18 point gap ahead of Larson's teammate Chase Elliott. Again, this is all extremely critical because the champion, the regular season champion after tonight will get an extra 15 playoff points on top of their existing playoff point basket as they try to make their way to make it to the championship four in Phoenix in November. Now the other points about us to look at is over on the opposite end, the fight for the playoffs. Still technically at the moment, three spots are up for grabs here in the playoff picture. Marantrek Jr., he is all but safe. Unless something drastic happens, he is plus 58 above the cut line. His teammate Ty Gibbs, plus 39, but the driver that holds a final spot is Chris Buescher, plus 21 points above the cut line, ahead of pole sitter Bubba Wallace, and Ross Chastain just six points behind Bubba at minus 27. We're showing you these five drivers only because these five are the only ones that can make it on points. 19th place Kyle Busch and on back, the only way they can make the playoffs is that they do what Harrison Byrne did last weekend at Daytona, and that is win. That is the only way that Kyle Busch on back can make the playoffs is what they win, but these five drivers can still make it on points. Bush, the official beer of NASCAR and proud sponsor of the Bush Light Pole Award, given to the fastest driver at each NASCAR Cup Series event. Bush Light congratulates Bubba Wallace for his third career pole, his first pole since Texas in September of last year, and doing it with a speed of 167.146 miles per hour. Since 2020, Bush Beer has invested more than $70 million in becoming one of the NASCAR Cup Series premier title sponsors. So here's a look at the 2024 Cookout Southern 500 starting lineup. Bubba Wallace on pole, but look at to his outside. Rookie Carson Hosevar, an extraordinary lap for the 77 rookie driver. Road 2, another surprise, Chase Briscoe, who won an Xfinity race here at Darlington in 2020, sitting alongside the defending Southern 500 winner, Kyle Larson. Road 3 is Martin Truex Jr., a former Southern 500 winner, and to his outside is a regular season points leader, Tyler Reddick. Row 4 has Ryan Blaney, the defending Cup Series champion, and William Byron, who won here at Darlington a couple years ago in the 24 ride, starts in the 8th position, with Christopher Bell and Chris Buescher rounding out the top 10. Row 6 is Austin Sindrick and Brad Kozowski, who snapped that long winless streak here at Darlington earlier in the spring. And Row 7, Ty Gibbs, and to his outside is one of the best here at Darlington, Denny Hamlin in the 11 car. Row 8 has Ricky Josh Berry alongside with Austin Dillon in the 3 car. Kyle Busch, a former winner here in the Southern 500, needing a win in order to make the playoffs, starting alongside John Hunter Nemechek with Corey LaJoy and Chase Elliott in the 9 car, rounding out the top 20. Row 11 is Justin Haley in the 51 car with Ross Chastain in a beautiful throwback Bush Beer number 1 to his outside. Row 12 has Joey Lagan on the number 22 ride, a former winner here at Darlington, and Harrison Burton, last week's winner at Daytona, starting alongside. Row 13 has Daniel Hemrick and rookie Zane Smith, 
Alex Bowman in the 48 ride, starting alongside the two-time Southern 500 winner Eric Jones in the 43 car. And round out the top 30 is teammates Noah Gregson and Ryan Priest in the 41 ride. In the final four rows, Michael McDowell and Daniel Suarez, Todd Gillen and Shane Van Gisbergen in the 16 ride, Kaz Grawl and Ricky Stenhouse Jr. with Timmy Hill in the 66 ride, rounding out the 37 car field. Here's a look at the odds to win the Southern 500. Kyle Larson sitting at the best odds at plus 500. Tyler Reddick at plus 550. Hamlin at 600. Ryan Blaney at 750. And then a triple pair of 900s between William Byron, Martin Tricks Jr., and Brad Keselowski. And then a sharp decline. Christopher Bell at plus 1600, as well as Bubba Wallace, the pole sitter, also at 1600. Bell and Wallace could be some really, really good odds as they have fast cars here this weekend. And Ty Gibbs at plus 1800. Chase Elliott sitting at 2000 with Kyle Busch at 2200. And then Josh Berry, Joey Logano surprises him so far deep at plus 2500 each. Rasha Hussain plus 2800. And Carson Hosevar at plus 4000 with Eric Jones and Alex Bowman at plus 5000. And Chase Briscoe rounding it out at plus 6,500. Okay, so what can we expect in this Southern 500? Well, knowing the Southern 500, Darlington in the next gen car, we do know it's going to be an interesting race. It's going to be a good race more than likely. But what about some of the drivers to watch out for? Well, it's a long race. So you can't really rely on drivers that, for example, we look at practice. You can't really have a good eye on who's going to do well there because Darlington is known for its long green flag runs and tire management. So relying on practice is not going to be the best solution. But we have when we talk about some of the drivers to watch out for, we have to look at, let's first off, the bubble drivers. Who is the best of the five? The 19 of Truex, the 54 of Gibbs, the 17 of Busher, the 23 of Wallace, and the one of Chastain. Well, obviously at the moment, Bubba Wallace made a statement. He came into this race Basically, he needs to win. I mean, 21 points, yes, he can overcome that based on points, but going up against a guy like Chris Buescher, we know how well he can run here at Darlington. Nearly won here back in the spring if it wasn't for Tyler Reddick's uh, kamikaze move in turn turns three and four. So because of that, Bubba, with this mindset, came into this weekend thinking, I have to win. And so far, he has delivered by making a... And so far, he has delivered by putting that 23 car on the pole. But if... Any of the bottom two drivers, the 23 or the 1 car, they're racing the 17 car. Ty Gibbs in the 54 and Marshall Jr. in the 19. Those two drivers, they are really safe unless something dramatic happens in terms of like the, the two drivers, the 54 and the 19. They have to blow up within lap four or before the stage ends. I mean, I, something major has to happen in order for those two drivers to not make it into the playoffs because those two can make it in on speed alone. But the 17 car has been a bit iffy. If we're talking about the 17, the 23, and the 1 car, that's the main battle. Of those, three, of those three drivers, the 23 is the best, is the most consistent. They have shown the most speed out of the three drivers. However, Busher has that 21-point gap. So honestly, the only thing that Busher needs to do is just remain within reaching distance of the 23 car and the 1 car. That's all he needs to do. He doesn't need to go out and win. Obviously, that would help. But he doesn't need to go out and win unless we have a new winner. He just needs to remain within striking distance of the 23 and the 1 because he does have a 21-point gap. The stages aren't really going to matter. Bubba can win stage 1 and stage 2. Chris Busher cannot earn a single point, and Busher would still be ahead. He would still be at least one point ahead. So Busher... He has a lot riding for him in terms of a cushion. However, we do have to talk about the possibility of a new winner, like what we saw last weekend at Daytona with Harrison Burton. You look at some of the drivers, Kyle Busch. Yes, the speed that he has brought in with this eight car is not there, but it is still Kyle Busch, and anything can happen in NASCAR, so that's something you just can't take that. You, you just have to just keep that in the back of your head. Also, a guy like Eric Jones. I know it sounds crazy because he's riding with Legacy Motor Club. The team is so far deep in the back of the pack. But again, he's a two-time Southern 500 winner for a reason. Winning both with Gibbs and he won with Legacy Motor Club. Granted, it was with a Chevy team at the time. But still, he's won with two different teams. One was the top team and one was a mid-card team. 
He knows how to win here. He knows how to get the job done. And again, when it comes to Darlington, it's more about tire management. It's more of a driver's track. It's a driver's race rather than a track like Michigan or these, you know, big mile half racetracks where it's a combination of driver and aero. I mean, can we even say Carson Hosevar? I mean, I don't know. Can we say that? I mean, he's starting in second. I don't think anybody had that. I mean, I don't think he's going to win, but... I mean, hell, you you managed to put it on the front row at Darlington in your first start. Well, technically second start, but in your rookie season, that's an incredible, incredible accomplishment. Who knows? Again, weirder things have happened. Chase Briscoe starting in third. He's a former winner here at Darlington, that being the Xfinity Series, but straight up beat Kyle Busch to get that win. So, again, stranger things have happened in this sport. We have seen these out-of-the-blue moments where a car that you would not expect to win all of a sudden, is having the best car. Austin Dillon at Richmond, if it wasn't for that caution, he would have gone out one straight up. That was a team that had no chance based on how they ran all season long, yet they went to Richmond, they had the best car. Why can't the same happen today with a guy like a Chase Briscoe, maybe even a Carson Hosfar, or a guy like Eric Jones? Teams or drivers with teams that you would think have no shot at winning, all of a sudden, they're up there battling with the top dogs. So, Yes, considering Darlington is more of a driver's track, you cannot take these names and just throw it away. You have to consider them based on an asterisk due to this win and you're in format. But we talked about the drivers in the bubble and trying to fight their way in. What about the drivers up top? That being Reddick, Larson, and Elliott. I think it's just a straight up, again, similar to what I said about uh, Gibbs and Truex. Unless Reddick has an absolute shocker, an absolute horrible day, he is going to win the regular season title. He has a good enough points gap, 17 ahead of Larson, 18 ahead of Elliott. And let's be honest, that 45 team has run a lot better than the 9 and the 5 car in recent weeks. In fact, in fact, in recent months, that 45 car has been much better in terms of consistency and speed than the 9 and the 5. But Larson is a former winner. He has won this at the 500 before. Reddick was close earlier in, in the spring, winning at Darlington, but... Uh, was not uh, able to make it happen. But Larson has won at Darlington before. So there is that past experience you need to consider. Honestly, the 45 biggest competitor is the five car because of his previous experience of winning here at this racetrack. It is going to be an interesting fight, but I do think that Reddick, this version of Tyler Reddick, this version of this 45 team is a lot better than where they were last year, where they were earlier this year. And I think they're going to, unless something major happens, They'll cover it and they'll become the regular season champions for 2024. Now let's take a look at my Fantasy Live lineup. I have Bubba Wallace as one of my starters. It's not a surprise, I think, to have him there because he has run well at Darlington in the past and that 23 team has shown much better speed in recent weeks. So uh, I'm having him in my starter lineup. Lineup Kyle Larson I have in there. Denny Hamlin I have in there being a former winner here at Darlington at multiple occasions in the Southern 500. I got Christopher Bell who has been pretty fast here in practice this weekend. And I got Marjorie Jr. the last of my starters with Tyler Reddick in my garage. But the driver that I have winning is the 19 car of Marjorie Jr. Competing for the final time in the, in the Southern 500 as a full-time driver. He has won here in the past like I mentioned. And that 19 car, they haven't shown the greatest speed, but they've kind of been there. If you look at their 5, 10, and 15 lap averages, they've kind of just been floating there. As we get longer into a green flag run, it's a Martin Truex Jr. style of race. This is a Martin Truex Jr. style of race. Tire management, long green flag runs where it's in the driver's hands. Martin Truex Jr., I feel like he has a good enough car to where he can get to the front and can stay at the front as long as no major accidents happen or anything major happens to the 19 team. I see him going to victory lane. And the drivers that I have making it to the playoffs, well, since I have Truex winning, obviously he's in there. Ty Gibbs, and I do have Chris Buescher making it. But I do have him making it by only like three or four points. I think slightly. I think while the 23 car is much better than the 17 car, I do think the 17 can hang with the 23 of Bubba. I think he can just maintain distance so where he doesn't have to beat him, but just be within arm's length to be able to make it based off of a few points. So I have the 19, 54, and the 17 make into the playoffs with the 23 and 1 out. But regardless, it's going to be a very fun race to see the, the two points battles between the regular season title and who's making it into the playoffs. It's going to be a fun race, so I can't wait to see what happens. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Who do you think is going to win and who do you think is going to make the playoffs? As always, make sure you come back to this channel later tonight, recapping everything that took place in the Southern 500. 
But until next time, my name is Jet from MDK. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see y'all next time.